Thank you for joining the broadcast of the Progressive Missionary Baptist Church, the friendly church on the avenue located at 3301 King Street in the city of Berkeley, pastored by Dr. Earl C. Stuckey. Our prayer is that your faith, ha faith has not wavered and your trust remains in the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that even though we are socially distant, the church is in you, and God, in God inhabits the praise of all, all those who worship him in spirit and in truth. At this time, we will be led in song by Sister LaJoyce Marius, followed by a scripture and prayer by Minister Daryl Price. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. All will sing how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God all will sing how great how great is our God how great is our God sing with me how great is our God all will sing how great how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll sing how great, how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Okay, this, <clears throat> this morning our scripture is taken from Colossians chapter 1, 1 through 13. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are in Colossus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel, which has come to you as it has also in all the world and is bringing forth fruit as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God and truth. And as you heard from Epaphras, our dear brother, uh, fellow servant who was faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, who also declared to us your love in the spirit. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom of spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, 
fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of his inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us unto the kingdom of the Son of his love. That's Colossians 1, 1 through 13. Bless the hearers of his word. Let's go before the Lord's throne. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before your throne of grace humbly today, Father, recognizing who you are, Father. There is none like you, Father. The holy, righteous God who is above all, over all, and in all, Father. We just give you praise today, Father, because we are who we are because of you, Father. So we just thank you for all the blessings, all your grace, all your love, all your mercy that you bestow upon us, Father. We especially thank you this day as we remember what Christ did on the, Christ, on the cross for us, Father. Yes. How he died for us, Father. He yes. shed his blood and was buried and was risen up on the third day with all power, Father. Yes. Yes. And you said all those that believe, Father, and called on his name shall be saved. So we just give you the praise today for calling us out of that darkness into the light, Father. Father God, we lift up all those who are suffering now with the coronavirus, Father, yes. and uh, those who are grieving from loss, Father, we just pray uh, that you will heal them and comfort them, Father, because you are the God of all he healing. You are the God of all comfort, Father. We just give you praise, Father, for your grace, Father, and through your grace, Father, we don't never want to forget we come before you as those who fall short, Father. And we just want to ask you to forgive us of our sins today, Father. And pray that you consider our petitions that we bring forth before you, Father. And Father God, we lift up all those on the front line today. The yes. nurses, the doctors, the yes. firefighters, Father. All those workers who come together after storms and help rebuild, Father. There are just so many. We just ask that you keep your hand on them. And we just ask that they don't know you from the part of the, their sin, Father, that you would just reveal yourself to them, Father, and call them out of the darkness. Father God, we also lift up progressive to you today, Father. Thank you for our pastor and his wife, Sister Kay. We just ask for your continued hand of grace on them. And as we lift up Progressive, Father, we lift up all the saints in Progressive, Father. And thank you for providing all their needs, Father, because you are truly an awesome God, as my sister was singing, Father. You provide all our needs. You take care of us in good times and bad times. And we just give you the praise, Father. We just pray that you will guide us in your ways, Father. Teach us your truths, Father. And all the time, Father, we will continue to come before you with thanksgiving yes. and praise. Yes. And we do all this in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. desires 
feel your longing every pain that you feel he feels them just like you and he can't afford to make you feel only good then you can't appreciate the good times be be Because there's someone else who's worth something you be grateful. There's someone else who love to be in your shoes. Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful for it will be all right. At this time, I'd like to introduce Minister Daryl Marius, who will deliver today's message entitled, Deliverance. Amen. Indeed, it is a pleasure to stand before you this morning, and I'm grateful and thankful to have been invited into your homes. I must say that I am excited this morning for a couple of reasons, one being that by tradition here at Progressive, this is the time, the day that we celebrate the Lord's Supper, that we embrace this union and communion that we have with God. And I know that I'm looking forward in my home with my family in joining the Lord's Supper. And secondly, I'm excited this morning because of our subject matter. Not going to be long, but what we're going to look at, I find exciting, saints, because it is based upon what God has done for us that we're able to embrace, enjoy, reach and reap all the benefits that come as a result of being a child of God. And so based upon God's word and the truth in his word, I am grateful as the songs was just sung. This morning, our key scripture comes out of the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 13. However, before we read that, there are some preferred scriptures that we're going to look at that are pertaining to what our subject matter is. First scripture will be found in the book of St. John, chapter 18, verse 36. And I'm going to read from the New American Standard Version. It reads as thus. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. Our second scripture will come from the book of Colossians, excuse me, the book of Corinthians. Chapter 6, verse 9 through 10, it reads as thus, and I'll be reading again from the New American Standard Version. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, and by the way, that word received translates into misled. So do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, no adulterers, no effeminate, 
nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, drunkards, revelers, or swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And now we will look at our key scripture. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. It reads as thus, and I'll be reading from the Amplified Translation. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. I want you to pay close attention, saints, to the list of individuals, that is, the behavior that is exhibited by the unsaved. For reference, it reads, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, drunkards, revelers, or swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. As we go through this lesson, I would have you keep in mind, bear in the forefront of your mind these individuals. These people and their behavior will be starkly contrasted by the experience that we as the children of God have had. Let us look at deliverance, the title of our message. A biblical definition of deliverance reads as thus, the act of delivering someone or something, the state of being delivered, being liberated, being rescued. All of the things that we see and therefore read, we find in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. These are things, saints, I may say, that are only applicable to those who are saved, those of the household of God. I present to you a question. Now, you're in the privacy of your own home, and so you can raise your hand if you so choose, or acknowledge within your heart, but I present to you a question as a saint. How many of you have been witness or participated in an exorcism? I want you to think about that for a minute. How many of you can raise your hand or in your heart acknowledge that you have witnessed or that you have participated in an exorcism. How many of you? I can say unequivocally and answer that question for you. All of us have. See, we've all participated in an exorcism because when you received Christ in your life, those things that bound you those things that controlled you, those things that you had previously not been delivered from, when you received Jesus Christ, an exorcism took place, and you were set free from the demonic domination that was in your life. You see, in this context, the word deliverance is used as a Christian euphemism. So let's, let's look at what a euphemism is. In simplest terms, a euphemism is, a, is a, a nice, easy, soft way to answer a person versus a more harsher way to present an answer. See, an example of a euphemism would be, um, let's say, if a person that we knew was murdered. A nicer way of saying that using a euphemism would see that person has passed away. So what we see is that the word deliverance in this case is used in such a way that it's saying in a nicer way exorcism by using the word deliverance. However, the results of what we have experienced is that indeed 
we have been exercised. It's just in a nicer way we use the Christian vernacular of saying delivered. But nonetheless, those things that have bound us in the past, those things that we were held in captivity by, through God's grace and the blood of Jesus, we have been delivered from those things. So uh, when you look at it from that perspective, saints, uh, we can see that that word exorcism is applicable to all of us. I know that by tradition, we tend to look at it and think of it as something that a Catholic priest or someone would come along and do. But mind you, the shepherd and bishop of our souls has done indeed just that. Amen. Mark chapter 3, verse 27 says, and I'm reading from the contemporary English version, no one can enter into a strong man's house and take his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man then he can take, plunder, and spoil everything. Saints, when you look at it that way, we realize that what has taken place in our lives is indeed an exorcism, a personal exorcism. And you see, you were the star of the show. This is what has taken place. This is the reality of what it is to be a Christian. I find it at times disheartening when I listen at the conversation that saints have. I realize that we live in a world today where we desire to have an upright and a proper influence on it, but for some reason, Christians find ourselves subject to the world more than the world is subject to us. That is, it tends to have more of an influence on our lives when just indeed the opposite is supposed to be exuded by the power God has entrusted in giving us. We are supposed to be the ones that have the presiding influence over something and not the other way around. But this is what has taken place. All of us who have repented, all of us who have believed, all of us who have received are now the children of the living God. Saints, may I say to you, God has done something supernatural in your life. God has done in the unseen realm that which manifests itself in the land of sight. You see, the reason in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9 through 10, we have this long list of observable behaviors is because when an individual looks like these people and they therefore mention, then we know there are those who have not been delivered. Those things that we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, present to us behaviors that all of us can readily look at and see in the lives of people. And in so doing, we understand that when we see this type of behavior in a person's life, this is a person that God has said will not inherit his kingdom. Not inherit his kingdom. You see, when an individual has not been delivered, the reality of it is that they belong to the kingdom of the one who rules this world, the devil. And in belonging to his kingdom, we understand Jesus said, I came that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Well, since we fully understand the devil, he comes to do exactly what the scriptures has told him to do. He's a thief. He comes to do nothing but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And unfortunately, when we look at the list that we read, in the lives of those individuals who have not been delivered, there is a continual destruction on a daily basis, moment by moment, that takes place in the life of the undelivered person. 
God gives us visual cues that can be observed so that when we see in the life of a person these chosen behaviors, we know there has been no translation into God's kingdom because there has been no deliverance. But now on the other hand, God has qualified you, filled you to share in the inheritance of himself with his people in the kingdom of light. This kingdom of light is the spiritual sphere to which believers, saved folk, have been transferred into. That's you and I. This is from the dominion of darkness, this power, authority, this darkness that once shrouded our lives and controlled us, all of us who have believed, received after repenting, have been delivered from. You see, saints, we have been rescued. It is interesting to note that God uses the darkness in the life of the evildoer to bring judgment upon that person as well as a nation. Case in point, look at our country. In all the ways this country has, it has turned from God and has become an instrument of judgment upon itself. I recall as a young man growing up that after saluting the flag, we were able to say a prayer. Now we have allowed prayer and that open relationship that man once acknowledged to be removed from our schools. As a result, our schools, our school grounds have become some of the most unsafe places for children to be. The leaders of this country have decided God is no longer important. Many of them have turned from him and as a result, we hear and see the negative consequences in the news on a daily basis. That is, there can be no more tragic of a story from time to time than you can listen to than your local and national news. I believe, saints, that this is a direct reflection of the fact that our country as a whole has not been delivered and those that have been entrusted to lead our country have turned from God. I remember the shock and awe I experienced when I saw President Obama allow the White House to be bathed with the rainbow flag. And we just read a long list of things that demonstrate and show that people who exhibit a given behavior, such as homosexuality, such as effeminatism, we understand that when an individual displays this and conducts themselves this way, this is reflective of a person that has not been delivered. And the danger in this is that God gives an eternal judgment upon this individual, these people. He says, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. May I say to you, to me personally, there can be nothing more disheartening. And that is to know and to live with the reality that someday I'm going to die. The Holy Scriptures tell us it is appointed once unto all men to die and then to be judged. I find it disheartening and perplexing to understand and know that there are people who do not fear this, who do not fully understand the consequences of their behavior of not being delivered and finding themselves then standing on the precipice of judgment, being judged according to a life that they lived. Now, the sad part about this, saints, is that they don't have to be judged that way. God has provided for us a way of escape. He sent Jesus to die in our place. The free gift of salvation is available and open to all men. All one has to do is repent, believe, and receive. Saints, let me remind you, we are not of 
this world. I understand that it's important for us to be socially responsible. It's important for us as saints to be involved with the various systems and ideologies and political perspectives that man has to live with and face every day. I understand that we live in a world and we're called to be a part of it. However, one must keep in mind what the Holy Scriptures say is a lot of a saint. This world is not our home. The things that interest, the things that govern and rule the hearts of unsaved men no longer have a place in our lives. The Bible reveals to us that we have been delivered. We have been translated. We have been transformed from one kingdom it identifies as being dark and to the true kingdom that is the kingdom of God, of light. We can become so comfortable, I fear, in the world that we are no longer offended by its sinful behavior. See, this is the devil's world, saints. Let's just tell it like it is. This is his system. God has allowed this world to be under his domination because of the choices that our foremother and forefather made, Adam, in acquiescing and giving him the authority that he has now. The scriptures say to us that men love darkness more than they love light. Now, I'm not saying that we have no responsibility. I'm not saying that we have nothing to do in terms of our participating in this world, but fully understand what your role is, and that is to be a light in the midst of darkness. That's the role that a saint plays. Our role in this world as a result of being transformed, translated, removed from the domination of an evil, dark kingdom into the kingdom of light, our role and our responsibility as Christians has changed. We no longer have a responsibility to this world. Our responsibility is to the kingdom of light. Now, being that your role is not to go to the poll, that is, to vote, and the reason I say that, saints, is not to be irresponsible, but to reveal something to you in the spirit, which we've already seen. It really doesn't matter who's in office, because this is the devil's system. This is the devil's kingdom. So what difference does it make who is in office? If it's not a man of God, then it doesn't matter whether it's Democrat or Republic. What truly matters is, is a man saved? And has he given himself over to the spirit of the living God? You see, there is no such thing as the lesser of two evils. Some may say, well, I'm not going to vote for Trump because he's bad. I'm going to vote for Biden because He's not as bad as Trump. But do you realize that Joe Biden has been endorsed by two main organizations that are diametrically opposed to the Christian life? Black Lives Matter and the LGBTQ community. Now, it's not that I have anything against either one of these organizations because I don't. And I would, I would like to incur I am not speaking to the people of the world. I'm speaking to God's children. I'm speaking to saints. See, God has an expectation, saints, for us to get our stuff together, to get our priorities together. And our priorities do not lie in this world. We have been delivered from this world. We are like enemies in a war but yet we have been left behind enemy lines to have an effect on whosoever will and desire to come. And that's where us as Christians 
have the opportunity to allow our lights to shine wherever we are in whatever we are doing. You see, those who God has said will not inherit this kingdom are the very people that we see in this life who are spearheading all these variety of different movements. And again, I want to say, I'm not against Black Lives Matter or LGBT or any of these groups, but I would caution any Christian that would lend themselves over to them. I, I, I would suggest that if you are a ascriber to Black Lives Matter, I strongly suggest that you read their manifesto because it is in reading their manifesto you will find it that they are the last group to be subject to the one that we have sought to give our lives to and to yield ourselves to, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, again, I want to say this is not a political message. This is just simply a way of conveying to the children of God, get your priorities right. Understand what is proper for us to embrace and give our energies over to. God has not empowered us to go out and fight for the things of this world. God has empowered us to be living lights, to be the salt of the earth, to be those to lead people who desire to be delivered, those who realize that repentance is in order for their lives. Now, how do these people come to this conclusion? Well, they look at our lives. They see the life that we live. And if we find ourselves subject to the things of the world, just like unsaved worldly people do, then if we find ourselves in a hopeless outlook such as that, how much more are those who are unsaved and who don't have God's spirit living in them, how much more lost, dazed, and confused are they? Our fight is not on behalf of this world. Our fight is for the kingdom of light in the name of Jesus. Our fight is a fight that has already been won. God simply calls upon us to take a stand in the truth, that great foundation that has been laid. The Bible tells us no other foundation can a man lay than that of Jesus Christ. Be reminded, saints, this world is not our home. And we have been delivered from this world. Now, now think about that for a minute. God has done something for us that we could never do for ourselves. We were all once shrouded, covered, oppressed, suppressed by sin. There was once in our lives before all of us were saved. Satan was our master. Satan ruled our lives. And our lives were a reflection of those who were on our way to hell. But God in his great mercy looked down upon us and found that we were yet sinners. He sent Christ to die on our behalf. What I desire for you to get out of this message is that you have been delivered. And in that deliverance, there is a freedom to live the way God has empowered us to live. You see, we really don't have any excuse for not living the way God desires for us to live. When you consider that our God in the awesomeness of who he is. Now, there are no words that I could ever say to convey to you who God is. But I will make a feeble attempt of who I contend I pray to. In my spirit, I perceive that our God is a disembodied, ultra-dimensional being, possessing and reflecting all the qualities of perfection one that is eternal, everlasting, possessing all power and all authority. See, there's none other that I can think of that even remotely fits that description. And though I may say it is a feeble description, one that is on the level of a man and the shallow insight that I have, nonetheless, I believe, as the Holy Scriptures teach, that God spoke and the world came into existence. I believe with all of my heart, no matter how mad, how, how hard a man may look and seek to find God in this universe, he never will. 
because the universe itself is in our God. Saints, if you are saved, filled with God's spirit, and have been delivered, indeed, today is a day of rejoicing. When one considers that we could never have delivered ourselves, never saved ourselves, let us consider and look at what God has done for us. God has made it so we have all the rights and privileges of children that belong to him. All the good things that God says to us are ours as a result of being a member of the kingdom that he rules it all belongs to us. Those are things that we could have never done for ourselves and manifested in our lives. It is solely and wholly based upon the goodness, the grace, the long suffering, and the mercy of God that you and I will be able to spend eternity with him in paradise. Nothing we could have ever done to earn that deliverance. Nothing we could have ever done to earn his love. It is simply because God is good, saints. It is simply because God is love. And that love has been manifested in our lives in the person of Jesus Christ. The doors of the church are open, saints. If you find yourself as one who does not know Jesus and the pardon of your sins, it's very simple. Repent believe and receive the doors of the church are open will you come The blood that Jesus shed for me way, way back on Calvary, oh, oh, the blood. That gives me strength from day to day. It will never, never lose its power. It soothes my doubts. And it calms my fears And it dries all of my tears Oh, the blood, the blood that gives me strength From day Today, it will never, 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 never lose its power. Oh, it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows.
is found. He reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the That gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose. It will never lose. It will. His power. Amen. In closing, saints, I want to remind you, our fight is not in this world. Our fight is in the kingdom of light. And being members of that kingdom, that is the only fight that we have, and that is to further and expand God's economy in this life. It is my prayer that Something has been said that would minister to you and stay with you and perhaps cause you to be filled with rejoicing throughout the rest of this morning and day. And also, I want to remind you, enjoy this time that we have with God in our union when we commune with him in taking the Lord's Supper. And now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think of, according to the power that works and lives within us. Unto him be all power, majesty, and might, world without end. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray that this broadcast has been uplifting to you today. Your announcer today has been Sarah Stevens. Feel free to address all communications to the Progressive Missionary Baptist Church in care of our Pastor Earl C. Stuckey at 3301 King Street in the city of Berkeley, California, 94703. Or you may call 510-655-3660. If you would like to support this ministry, please access our giving link from our website at www.progressiveforlife.org or contributions can be mailed directly to the church.